A rising actor's life is tragically cut short because of one's inability to handle rejection. This is the story of Merlin Santana. Before I get any further into this video, I'm Courtney Elise, aka Court Crimes TV, and welcome to my channel. If you happen to enjoy, please like, subscribe, and comment. Let's get into the video. Merlin Santana was born March 14, 1976, in Washington Heights, New York City. He was born to a Dominican mother by the name of Leia Santana. When Leia was pregnant with Merlin, doctors gave him a 50% chance of survival. The doctors would tell her that if his birth was successful, he would be a miracle baby. Merlin was born prematurely, but he was indeed Leia's miracle child. His mother decided to name him Merlin after Merlin the Magician. King Arthur's legendary wizard. She said that she felt her baby deserved a special name and one that he would be proud of. Merlin was definitely proud of his name. In fact, he loved his name. He used to introduce himself as Merlin the Magician and his friends used to call him that. Merlin had an amazing personality. Nothing about him was shy nor introvert. His mother described him as a very, very funny child who just loved making people laugh. At the age of just three years old, while out and about in in the city with his mother, his mother had a chance encounter with a talent agent. This agent saw something really special in Merlin. He was just three years old at this time, so he encouraged her to take Merlin to a national fast food ad campaign audition. And to no one's surprise, he got the job. After he landed this job, Merlin was booked and busy. He was working nonstop, constantly, but he loved it. Acting came second nature to Merlin. He also had a major advantage over his peers because Merlin was bilingual. He spoke Spanish and English. So obviously the jobs came pouring in to Merlin. And with all of this attention, his stardom steadily rising, he never let this attention get to his head, despite the tough environment he was brought up in. Merlin is from Washington Heights, New York City, and it is pretty rough. It was drug infested and there was constant crime. So acting kept Merlin's mind on the straight and narrow. He didn't let the environment that he grew up in destroy distract him. Also, his mother Leia was nothing to be played with. He was scared to, you know, disappoint his mom. And his mom was very strict on him and kept him on a straight path. Like I said before, acting came natural to Merlin. He got lots of jobs like Broadway, movies, and sitcom. But his big break would come in 1990 when he starred in a play called Hey Little Walter. This play catapulted Merlin's career because sitting in the audience during that play, watching was none other than Bill Cosby. Merlin at such a young age was such a great actor. His portrayal of the character he was playing was so spot on that Bill Cosby immediately had Merlin written into his show, The Cosby Show. Merlin played as Stanley, Rudy Huxtable's boyfriend. And from there on, Merlin's career skyrocketed. That was his big break. Once The Cosby Show ended, he starred in TV shows such as Sister Sister, Getting By, Moesha, and most notably, he starred in The Steve Harvey Show as Romeo Santana. By the age of 19, Merlin officially moved to Los Angeles, California. Merlin avoided all negative vices that comes with being a celebrity. He didn't do drugs, he didn't really drink, and he also didn't partake in the other activities that I'm pretty sure his peers in Hollywood were doing. To stay away from all of the quote unquote temptation, Merlin decided to stay in North Hollywood in the San Fernando Valley. His focus and dedication would lead him to another major role. In 1996, Merlin would star in the Steve Harvey show as Romeo Santana attending Booker T. Washington High School, who was also a ladies' man. He would star in the Steve Harvey show for six whole seasons, making a name for himself. In between shows, Merlin would also dabble in another love. He loved music and he loved creating rap music. In his off time, he would start to focus on his debut rap album. He would often record at a friend's house out in Crenshaw. Merlin had a lot going on between acting and working on his rap debut album, but all of his hard work was finally starting to pay off. Merlin was getting 
getting noticed and he received nominations from the NAACP awards and also the Alma Awards. The Alma Awards honors Latinos within the industry. Merlin was so happy that his work was getting noticed and he was also extremely happy that he was getting noticed by more and more people by fans out in public. But one fateful night, Merlin's notoriety would unfortunately lead to his demise. On November 8th of 2002, Merlin and a friend, fellow actor Brandon Adams, would head over to Crenshaw to lay down some tracks. Brandon Adams was a successful actor in his own right. He starred in shows like The People Under the Stairs, The Sandlot, and he also starred in Bad as the kid version of Michael Jackson. Now what's crazy is that the weekend of November 8th, 2002, Merlin wasn't even supposed to be out in Los Angeles. He had actually made plans to go back to New York York to visit friends and family, but a last minute audition made him change his plans and stay back in Los Angeles. So on that night of November 8th, Merlin decided to call up a young lady that he and Brandon met a few nights prior. The lady they met was named Mercedes. Merlin and Brandon were at a restaurant when Mercedes noticed Merlin from the Steve Harvey show. And this is when she decided to introduce herself. So on that night, Merlin decides to call Mercedes and ask her if she wants to come over to the house in Crenshaw. She would agree and she arrived at the house at around 2 a.m. And once she arrived, she was acting very strange. They said she was very nervous, very frantic, and walking back and forth throughout the house as if she was looking for something. She would then make a phone call, and once she got off the phone, she would tell them that she had to go. It was urgent. Now, Brandon was watching Mercedes this whole time. He knew something was up with this chick. And being suspicious of her, he followed her outside. And this is when he noticed that she got into a huge van with two male individuals. Individuals. He saw the SUV drive up a few blocks and then stop in the middle of the road. Once Brandon saw this, Brandon went back in the house and told Merlin that they have to go, something is up with his girl. The two would end up leaving and once they got into the car, things would escalate quickly. Now, Brandon was in the driver's seat while Merlin was in the passenger seat. Getting ready to pull off, this is when Brandon just so happened to look into the side mirror. And when he looked into the side mirror, he noticed the red beam. Taking a closer look, this is when he saw two men running straight towards the car, armed. Brandon would yell for Merlin to duck and they sped off. The men shot the car with one of the going through the trunk, traveling to the passenger side headrest, hitting Merlin in the back of the head, killing him instantly. Brandon, still driving, didn't notice Merlin slumped over. I guess, still in shock, a whole bunch of adrenaline is rushing through Brandon's mind. He starts to yell Merlin's name over and over again, despite Merlin bleeding out profusely. At that moment, Brandon would stop the car and get out and flag down any police officer that just so happened to be driving by. But when police would stop, it was too late because Merlin had unfortunately already passed away. Right where the police unit was flagged down, it would turn into a crime scene. Police would then block off the area and start to search the car and they would locate Merlin's phone. When going through Merlin's phone, this is when they noticed that the last person Merlin had talked to was Mercedes. Police would bring this up to Brandon and he would tell them, yeah, she came by the house, but she was also at and really weird, strange, and just all of a sudden she made a phone call and said she had to go. With this information, police would ask Brandon to contact Mercedes to see if they could meet up to, I guess, talk about the whole Merlin situation. I can only imagine what is going through Brandon's head. You know, he just witnessed his best friend's murder and now he has to meet up with the woman who obviously has something to do with it. I'm pretty sure he does not want to talk to this woman but he does it anyway and to everyone's surprise Mercedes shows up once she shows up police immediately surrounds her and take her in for questioning but questioning Mercedes wasn't gonna be easy at all she wasn't being cooperative she lied about everything I mean she lied a lot about stupid stuff she lied about her name she lied about her date of birth she lied about her age she lied about everything. Mercedes lied and told people that she was 21 years old when in fact this girl was only 15 years old. She also lied about her name. Her name was not Mercedes. Her real name was actually Monique King. Her stories that she kept giving police kept changing and they just weren't making any sense. 
And finally, after noticing that, you know, police wasn't buying her, her act, she decides to come clean and tell the truth. I forgot to mention this in the beginning, like midway through, but when Merlin and Mercedes, aka Monique, met initially a few days later, they actually hooked up and it was consensual. Well, after this one night stand, Monique actually wanted something more. She went to Merlin and actually wanted a relationship, but Merlin told her, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm not really looking for anything serious at this moment. And this rejection pissed her off. This rejection from Merlin made Mercedes, aka Monique, so upset that she would come up with an evil, evil plan. Her plan was to go to two men and tell them that Merlin had SA'd her. The two men that Mercedes, aka Monique, went to was 21 year old Damian Bates and 25 year old Brandon Douglas. Now what's crazy with these two men was that one of them, Damian, was actually messing around with Mercedes. So Mercedes was just getting all type of people potentially in trouble and eventually in trouble because she was underage sleeping with all these grown men who didn't know she was underage. And on the night of November 8th of 2002, that is when Damian and Brandon would set out on their evil plan. She admitted to police that she had Merlin set up because he rejected her, which is sad, you know? She's so young, but she has such an evil mindset, terrible. Brandon was sentenced to 23 years in prison when Damien, the one who actually shot the that killed Merlin, was sentenced to 70 years in prison, while Mercedes, aka Monique, was sentenced to 10 years in juvenile custody, which is a shame because she is the one who orchestrated all of this. She should have at least got 50 years in my opinion because she orchestrated the murder, she lied, she had these grown men sleeping with her. Knowing she was underage, they didn't know she was underage. She orchestrated all of this, her evil 15 year old mind orchestrated all of this. She should have got like 50 years to life in prison, but she is a free woman now. And I saw somewhere online and I can't find it, but she was actually dissing Merlin, you know, talking bad about him just recently. So she still has not learned her lesson, but rest in peace to you, Merlin.